had the wonderful opportunity to river raft up the Nile. Well, wonderful is a strong word. The word I'm looking for is uh, terrifying. I sometimes get these two mixed up. Let me list a few dangers of the Nile. The Nile crocodile, the hippopotamus, those cuddly little cuties kill up to 500 people a year. Now, don't get me started on the snakes. Many of the snakes in the area have the distinct honor of being described as the world's deadliest and most venomous snakes. There is the black mamba, the Egyptian cobra, the Egyptian hissing sand snake, the red spitting cobra, and last but not the least, the green mamba. While we are looking out for the dangers below, the green mamba likes to live in trees and attack from above. All of these lovely creatures were on my mind as I stepped into the raft for the first time. As we were headed up the river, our guides, who are way too young to be called guides, continuously pointed out to the river's dangers as though they were tourist attractions. This part of the Nile is up to 273 feet deep. Don't go to the right. That way leads to Dutchman's grave pocket. Nobody has ever returned alive after crossing that patch. Thank you for the information, Dundee. It was at this point that I first heard the sound. It was a hissing sound. I looked around the raft thinking that maybe a green mamba had dropped in with us and then I saw it and I froze. The hole in the raft was about a size of a dime. Being the brave adventurer that I am and not wanting to alarm the other passengers, I quietly cleared my throat and screamed, there is a hole in the raft. That's when one of our guides very casually pulled out the first aid pouch. I figured he had some sort of an epoxy rubber patch that would hold us till we made it to the shore. Instead, he pulled out a single band-aid. He peeled the paper, placed the band-aid over the hole, declaring, we're all good to go. Well, we were a lot of things. We were potentially sinking. We were about to be a crocodile snack, and we were terrified. What we decidedly were not is good to go. Just like patching a raft with a band-aid, there are a whole lot of people who think we can fix the problems of trafficking and abuse by sticking a band-aid over the problem. However, like a hole in a raft, traveling down dangerous rivers, trafficking, and abuse simply cannot be fixed with a band-aid. These are problems that need the public justice system to be fully repaired. In the Bible, the concept of restoration is closely linked with the ideas of healing and refurbishing and contentment. Psalm 51.12 emphasizes this when it states, restore me, restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. We have a God that repairs, not with band-aid, but wholly and truly and deeply. We have a God who sees the victim of trafficking and abuse and is on a journey with them and us towards restoration that leads to contentment. How beautiful is that?